So the next instructions that we'll be discussing about are the I type and the J type format. We've pre previously discussed about the R type format, which was easy because it was mostly addition and subtraction and multiplication type instructions. The I type deals with the complex instructions like loading and storing and branching. So loading and storing is basically loading instructions from the memory and storing instructions to the memory. So LW and SW signifies load and store instructions. So in LW, you have um, instructions from the memory and it goes and store is stored into the register. And in store SW or store type instruction, we're storing instructions from these uh, registers into the memory location. Now the memory location is accessed through the addition of the offset and the register. Now, in each of these cases, in the, each of the load and store operations, the source and destination are different. So for a load operation, uh, so, uh, in, uh, so the ITIP format is like this. So we have the opcode as usual. The load and store format will have, store instruction will have its own opcode. RS is the source, RT is the destination, and uh, offset is these numbers, uh, the constant numbers that you see beside the registers. So for the load instruction, the, uh, the source is the memory. So the memory register is $S2. So the, the binary representation of $S2 will be stored in RS and the binary representation of $T0, which is the destination, will be stored in RT and 24 is the offset, which will be stored in, six, uh, in this 16-bit offset part. Right. So for, uh, for accessing the memory address, the memory location, which where the data is stored, we add the offset and the resource register and the we add the offset and the register then we get the uh, which will give us the location or the address of the data and then that data will then be stored in dollar t0 same goes for this in this case it's opposite but the operation is the same whatever is in stored in dollar t0 will store it in the address uh, which is the uh, which will which will gain by adding 24 the offset and the uh, register dollar s2 these two will be added, then we'll, uh, which will give us the address of the location where we'll store the contents of $T0 into. So that's how the load and store instruction works. The next is the branch instructions. This is how the load, uh, you would write the opcodes. Uh, the, same, the same principle applies. $1 is the destination. So here we have, uh, so here we have $1 binary representation. $2 is the source. So here we have dollar two source a binary representation and immediate contains the offset. So offset is hundred. Right. So for branch instructions, which is basically um, uh, which is basically the conditionals that we have in our C or Java code. Whenever we have operator based conditional conditionals, we use the branch instruction. So suppose you have if I not equals to J or if I equal equals to J or if I less than J or if I greater than J. We execute these instructions, right? So in this case, the code example states this. So uh, in MIPS instruction, we have a sort of opposite mechanism. So if you have I not equals to J, you would execute this. Or else, what would you do? You would just execute whatever is after this instruction, right? Whatever is after H equals to I plus J. So for I not uh, for I uh, not equals to J. You would, uh, so what we will write is we will write the opposite. So not equals to J, the opposite of not equals to J is BEQ, which is equal to J. So if I was equals to J, we would have need, we needed to jump to another part because we, we can't execute this instruction if I is equal to J. But if I is not equal to J, then this would just be executed automatically. So if the opposite of BEQ is not equals to, so this part would be executed, right? If I was not equals to J. Let me just make this clear again. If I was not equals to J, we would execute this part. But if it was equal to, we would have to ex we would have to uh, jump towards another part and not execute this. So we have to jump to another uh, label. So that's what's happening here. So if I not equals to J, we would just execute how it was how it would be happening in normal instruction flow. But if it's equal, we would have to make a jump. So that's why. B, E, Q, if S0 and S1, which is I and J in this case, if they are not equal, then you would jump or else you would just go about into a normal instruction flow. So there are, there are many kinds of jump uh, branch instructions. There's branch not equals to branch less than, which is BLT, then branch greater than, which is BGT, then branch equal, which is B, E, Q, and so on and so forth. So what would happen if we had larger constants? 
So we, as you can see, this is the format. So this, you remember this format, we just copy it over here to make it easier to understand. So this is the format that we're following, right? So as you can see here, we can always load 16 bit or 16 bit digits, but what if we want this 32 bit constants and load it into a register? Here we can only load the 16 bit constant. What, what, if, what if the constant is 32 bit long? So in this, that case, we use this thing called, we use these two instructions called Lui and Ri. So Lui is loading the upper 16 bit into the, the, the register that you want to load the 32 bit constant into. And then Lui is loading the upper immediate or the upper 16 bits. And then Ri is basically adding the lower 16 bits into the upper 16, upper 16 bits, thus making it into a 32 bit constant. So Ri is basically adding the whatever you had dollar t0 contain the the upper 16 bits and adding this lower 16 bits which is this into uh, the upper 16 bits and then storing it in dollar t0 again making it a 32 bit constant now what would happen if you had jump instructions so jump instructions have opcode as usual and 26 bit address 26 bit address is the address that you're going to jump into and jump instructions are basically unconditional branch instruction uh, like branch instruction we had uh what you call it? we had um we had we had to do based on a condition but for jump we don't need a condition we just we can just jump whenever we write the code which is whenever we write the command we'll jump into the designated label right so um so i forgot to mention one thing what will be the binary representation of branch instruction so dollar s0 will be in the binary representation of dollar s0 will be in rs the binary representation of dollar s1 will be in rt and the binary representation of this offset will be in, of this label will be in 16 bit offset right now let's go on about how do the functions function calling work in nips so we use this uh, command called jal and jal basically calls the the function uh, and so we have the procedure address over here so and the, uh, it's it's kind of similar to jump, so that's why it follows the J format. It has a 26-bit address. So let's look at it as an example for this. So basically, um, you have this kind of a you have a main function, and the main function is suddenly calling another function over here, which is the equal function. So what's happening here? We are doing whatever we're supposed to do uh, as we are, we are executing uh, some instructions. And then when we're calling another function, we are writing this instruction called JAL or gel. And then we're calling the uh, procedure address. And then oh, this, is the, this contains the procedure address. And then we're jumping to that procedure, executing whatever is in that procedure. And then when we are trying to return to the uh, next line after equal, or the, after the, like, if we're trying to return to the, other parts of the computation after the function execution is over, we use JR dollar thirty one or JR dollar RA as you could see here. JR RA. This is for returning, uh, like this is for returning uh, the procedure. Like after the procedure is over, when you want to return to the normal parts of the code, that's what that's the command you used. JR RA. So that's about it for the all the instruction formats. Next, we'll be looking into all the different kinds uh, of uh, how to execute the uh, how to execute uh, some different examples of how these instructions work. We just understood the basics of how the inner workings of uh, the MIPS instruction. Now we'll be looking into how um, a C, how to convert a C code to a MIPS instruction code. So give a thumbs up if you like this video and good luck.